we want to talk about the title is God will not afflict formally titled Jesus been there done that got the t-shirt <laughs> there's nothing you can go through that Jesus hadn't already gone through before you amen and so we talk about being transformed by the renewing of our mind a lot here but I want to drill down just a little bit God has something good for you I just declare a spirit of expectation of something good from God for each person in Jesus name do you know as a good daddy you don't get he doesn't give his children what we deserve aren't you glad <laughs> praise the Lord daddies don't do that and he's the best daddy that there is he's our Abba our father praise the Lord but as you get your mind renewed to the word of God the kingdom of God the king it's a government the best way of saying it maybe is just it's a system of operating God has a way his thoughts and his ways the Bible says are higher than ours. it doesn't say ours can't get his as high as him he was just saying to the people of Israel my ways are higher if we get our thoughts as high as his thoughts we begin to think big like our father thinks big then our ways will be like his ways the reason our ways aren't like his is because our thoughts aren't like his <clears throat> but we can learn to think like God he's put it in a book he's made it easy for us praise God and so as we begin to think more like God and less like man then as we begin to be transformed because of that but we're out in a, the world system. Now we have to switch systems. We switch from the world system to the system of the kingdom of God. And as our minds are renewed, we are automatically, I'm sorry, I have to tell you this is true. You will automatically confront the world's philosophies as you begin to operate the way God would operate, trying to make it on earth as it is in heaven and so when you do that it's going to cause conflict have you noticed that and so what's going to happen it's going to make you feel uncomfortable have you noticed that too and if you stick with it now you can you're supposed to do it in love and that's not always the easiest thing but you stand your ground in love and you don't back off because it makes you uncomfortable, two things are gonna happen. One, persecution. That's what triggers persecutions. Two, you just got transformed by the renewing of your mind. Just because you see it and think it, you're not transformed yet. You get transformed when you put it into place and overcome the, uh, the, when you come out of your comfort zone now you're to a new level and, but then you're in a new comfort zone and you'll have to get out of that one and you're going to spend the, if you want to serve Jesus with all of your heart you're going to spend the rest of your days on earth going from one comfort zone to another comfort zone but as you do you get transformed into the likeness of God be able to produce more and more fruit for the kingdom of God and for the glory of God. Hallelujah. So really, we just want to be successful in switching systems. Can I have an amen? Amen. So in order to do that, I'm so glad God doesn't make this stuff real complicated. You know, because the kingdom of God, he said, let the little children come. So if it's so complicated, a child can't understand, well, you might be off target just a little bit. So to be successful at switching systems, we have to know what is God's will for us. And that is this. We have to know God is always for us and never against us. Are you, aren't you always for your children? Amen. I've never, you know, when I was a boy, I played in every kind of ball league that there was on up to adulthood and everything. And I, you know, never one time did I see a father in the stands and maybe his child came up to bat. I never heard one of them call out to exhort the pitcher, strike him out. No, not one time ever. 
<laughs> Amen. God wants you to succeed. He wants you to be the head. Now, he wants you to walk in your full inheritance. He's not a stingy God. Amen. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. It is my father's good pleasure, Jesus said, to give you the kingdom. So you have to know God's for you every single time. And when you move up out of that comfort zone, it's not to hurt you. It is to bless you, to put you in a place where you could walk in more of your inheritance that is fantastic. You get the same inheritance as Jesus. Amen. We're joint heirs with Jesus. God's not a stingy God. Amen. Amen. So we have to know God is for us and therefore we don't have to be afraid no matter what it looks like. It may look like, oh, this is going to be trouble, but God is with you. Amen. Especially when you're standing for him, he will show up strong when you're bold for the kingdom. He is bold in what he brings forth the, the victory. Hallelujah. And it won't just be, you know, you got by and you have to get a recount with hanging chads and all that. No, it's going to be a total whooping, praise the Lord. And so therefore, you have to know that when things happen and it causes problems, you know, because Jesus said in this world, you, sh you shall have tribulations. Most of that will come from persecutions if you're being obedient. The rest will come from bad decisions that you make. But if you make the right decision according to the principles of the system of the kingdom of God, all you have to do is deal with persecutions. But Jesus said, now in this time, whatever you gave up, I'm going to give it back to you 100 fold with persecutions. But if I'm getting 100 fold, that is God's best. I can easily stand up to the persecutions. It'd be like the apostle Paul to say, oh, these light afflictions, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So we have to know when these bad things happen, the worst thing you can do is try to blame God for it. Because if something bad came, some affliction came, it did not come from God. Praise the Lord. The word of God is very clear. So the lyrics, God doesn't like, the devil loves, is K Sarah Sarah. Well, whatever will be, will be. I'm sick and God's in charge. So therefore he must want me to be sick. That is a lie from the devil. God can't give you what he doesn't have, praise the Lord. And so what I'm saying is, it's up to you. You choose. I, he says, I put before you, you know, blessings and curses, life and death. You, the understood you in there, choose life, choose blessing, praise the Lord. Some people say, well, why does God allow these bad things to happen? No, the question should be, why do we, the body of Christ, allow the bad things to happen? He's given us dominion over this. He said, let us make man, but let them have dominion. So God cannot legally get involved unless he uses a man, woman, boy, or girl. But I got good news. All he has to do is have one of those. Hallelujah to get the job done. Why are we allowing these things when we have dominion over everything on the earth, including the devil and all his powers and principalities and wickedness and high places, etc., etc., etc. Over the world system, we have dominion. He will allow what we will allow. He said, whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind it from heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'll lose from heaven. It's up to you and me. He has put us in charge. Praise the Lord. God is in charge of your life if you put him in charge because he has given you a free will. Why did he do that? Well, it would have been a whole lot easier just to make some robots and we just obey every time and all that. And uh, you know what? But God is love. And he made us in his image so that he can love us and we can love him and it would be a real love. He said, if you love me, obey my commandments. So if we want to show God how we love him, we obey his commandments, praise the Lord. And it's a real love. I use this example a lot and I'm going to keep on doing it till God says don't. When my children were small and I came home from work, They'd run to greet me, oh, daddy, and, and they'd, I'd bend down and they'd hug me around my neck and say, daddy, I love you. You know, that's the greatest thing in my whole life, I can tell you it. 
Any father out there will back me up on this. Praise the Lord. And, but what if I came home and they were playing some game or watching cartoons or whatever TV show? And I said, Daddy's home. And they just kept on watching. And I said, now, looky here. You get over here, you hug my neck, or I'm going to knock you upside the head. Well, you know, they could come over and hug me, but it just wouldn't be the same, would it? No, because God wants a real love, and a real love is because we choose to love him. And so he set it up that way to give us a free will because that's real love. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm preaching better than what you're shouting. So we have dominion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the, let's look at Psalm 115, 16. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. So when bad things are happening on the earth, is it God's fault or is it the fault of the children of men? Is it the heathen's fault or is it the fault of God's kids who have dominion over these things? God wants it to be on earth as it is in heaven and he uses you and me to do that. Amen. It first starts in our hearts. It's like heaven in there. God himself lives in there and the kingdom. Don't say, look here, look there, lo, behold, the kingdom of God is within you, praise the Lord. And then we take it and move it there out to where we are in my family, you know, my wife, my children, bring it to my church and wherever I work or go out in the marketplace, you bring the kingdom of God with you and the ability because of our dominion and the authority that we have in the name of Jesus, we can make things on earth as they are in heaven. We come into places, everything's messed up because the devil around distort something beautiful that God has made and make it ugly and make it he brings to kill steal destroy but we have the anointing of God we have the word of God we have the name of Jesus we have the anointing we have the power of God in the name of Jesus. and so we come in and we call things that be not as though they were in the love of God and then things change and it becomes on earth as it is in heaven. We bring heaven into these earthly situations, worldly situations, and we bring the healing and we bring the victory, reconciliation, restoration, and so forth because God has made us to be able to do that. The devil just doesn't want you to know how powerful you are and how much authority that you have in the name of Jesus. But I also have to tell you, you got all this stuff from God. Oh, join heirs with Jesus. Got the name of Jesus, the word of God. Got all the promises of God. You can call things that be not as though they were. But yet, these things don't just automatically happen. Well, I'm a child of God. All the, ooh, I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to walk in. No, you're going to have to do what the word of God says to do. If you believe it, you'll do it. If you don't believe it you won't do it if you sow into the kingdom you're going to reap a harvest with the increase get back what you sowed with increase it works every single time the exact same way whether you're in the United States of America or whether you're in Kenya or the inner city or wherever you are it works the same way and as you live the kingdom way you operate the system of the kingdom of God these things happen. You see a problem, it's in your life, someone that you love, you find a promise in the word of God. You believe it in your heart, you confess it with your mouth, and then you act like it's done because it is. And then you'll see it happen. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen, the promises of God. For the things that are seen, the problems, are temporary, subject to change. But the promises of God, those things that are not seen, they are eternal. And the eternal always trumps the temporary in Jesus' name. 
So it's up to you and I to go and make things on earth as they are in heaven. And it's time to quit blaming God when things go wrong and run to God and say, help me, Daddy. Um, show me a promise that I could use because you're good for your word. You watch over your word to perform it. Hallelujah. So just don't think these things automatically happen. And if they do, oh, it must be God. No, God's for you every single time. He's never hollered out. Strike him out, Satan. No, he's always saying you can do it. He wants to see you circling the bases, amen, with a home run every single time. Amen. And by the way, he doesn't afflict his children. He doesn't send evil to teach us. That's not a good way to teach. Do you want to teach your children that way? No, what he wants is the same thing that you'd want for your children. You tell them what is right, why it is right, and how it'll be to their benefit in the long run, and then they just believe you and do it. That's what pleases God. Yes, he's a good daddy and he has to do some things because if you go off course and you keep getting farther and farther away, that's just that much many more knots you're going to get on your head to try to get back into the right place. So being a loving father, he will deal with you. But it's for your good always, praise the Lord. Just like, you know, the children of Israel, they, they got out of their comfort zone out there in the wilderness and they never could get out of it. And they lived the rest of their life not walking in their full inheritance because it didn't just automatically happen. So they went from the land of not enough and they came as a, now in the family of God and now they're in the short period of time should have been in the land of just enough learning that God is their source and they could trust him. And in a very short period of time, they could have moved into the land of more than enough, a land that flows with milk and honey. Praise the Lord. Don't be like them. Walk in your inheritance. It's not for the sweet by and by. Most of the, I mean, we get eternal life, but all the other things, they're for here on the earth. For example, money. You don't need money in heaven. <laughs> Only the gold. All that is, is pavement up there. And it's bad pavement compared to the pavement that they have. So that's not for up there. That's for here. There's most everything in the Bible. You know, most everything in the Bible talks about how to get from now until dying time. And how to glorify God. And how to represent Him and the kingdom while you're on the earth. Praise the Lord. So we need to learn those things. When you get to heaven... Your troubles are over. You don't have to learn how to overcome tribulation and all that. Stuff. I mean, your troubles are over, praise God. Thank God for that. But so why don't we all just go to heaven when we get born again? I mean, why, why do we have to stay down here with all the problems and so forth? Well, because your daddy would like to, he likes a big family. And he wants you to bring some people with you when you come up there. Amen. Isn't that right, Glenn? Gonna bring some people with show forth your daddy and how great he is yes. praise God hallelujah we should be going around my daddy could beat your daddy beat up your daddy because he can hallelujah doesn't mean he will but you know what I mean hallelujah so we're gonna have to leave our comfort zone but I want you to know God does not afflict let's look at uh, Isaiah 53 4 Surely he had borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. You don't get afflicted because Jesus took your affliction. Every affliction that the enemy would like to put on you, Jesus already had it put on him. Not just in the past, present, but even in your future. Just like he became poor so that you might be rich. Does that automatically happen? No, you got to work the principles, don't you? Uh, he became sick. He took sickness and disease on him so that you could walk in divine health. Does that automatically happen? You, you see Christians get sick? Yeah, it doesn't automatically happen, does it? But the provision is there. We need to walk in the promise knowing what he's done. And we could live a life 
without affliction because it doesn't come from God. And as we walk in his principles, all we have to do is overcome some persecutions. And you could cause those afflictions and everything, but they don't come from God. Amen. Sometimes they'll come from God's people. I'm sorry to say that. But nevertheless, they were just used by the enemy to do that. God does not afflict. He took the afflictions. And when you are hurting, he knows how the hurt. It's not like he has a pretty good idea. Like I might, you tell me about your problem and thing that happened. I can say, yeah, boy, I could imagine. Jesus doesn't have to imagine. It actually came on him. He knows exactly the pain that you're going through. He's been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Praise the Lord. So God will not afflict. Hallelujah. Let's look at Job 37, 23. Elihu came in to talk to him, representing God Almighty and tell him what kind of foolishness he was speaking. He said, now let me tell you the truth. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and in plenty of justice. He will not afflict, praise the Lord. Your affliction has not come from God. Cheer up, praise the Lord. You have authority over where that thing came from and you can get out of it by the power of God, by believing a promise, speaking it, and see it come to pass, hallelujah. So why won't, God? that begs the question. If God won't afflict, why not? Don't we deserve it? Thank God we don't get what we deserve. I'm glad I don't get what I deserve. Because really, I deserve hell. When I'm going to heaven, I get to walk in a, right now on this earth, today, this very moment, walk with the same inheritance that Jesus had. And I could use his name, and when I speak it, it's just as if he's speaking it. How, how do you beat that? Hallelujah. Why won't God afflict? Isaiah 63, verses 8 and 9. For he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. Let me say that again. In all their affliction, he was affliction, afflicted. When you hurt, he hurts. And he hurts exactly how you hurt. So therefore, he doesn't want you hurt. That's why he will not afflict. And the angel of his presence saved them in his love and in his pity. He redeemed them and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. You know, if he's, we're the body of Christ and he's the head, when the body hurts, the head knows about it. And what is the head trying to do? Everything he can to stop that hurting. I don't care if you think, oh, I'm insignificant. I guess I'm just like the little toe. Have you ever got up in the night, maybe to go to the bathroom, the lights are off and your little toe clips the table leg? Let me tell you, your head knows about it right away. And that head is saying, you do something, you rub that thing, you put a, wipe that blood up, put a Band-Aid on it, do something. Amen? And Jesus wants the pain to stop more than you do because he loves you even more than you love yourself and you're selfish. Can I have an amen on that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. He is afflicted. It all came on him. Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalm 103, 10 through 14. He had not dealt with us after our sins. Aren't you glad? nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. This is our Father. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards him, them that fear him. Praise the Lord. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. He knows we're weak in our body. We're carrying this flesh around. He's not standing in judgment over us. If it was, it wouldn't take him very long to see something wrong. He's not looking for something wrong. As a man... I don't even look for things wrong with my kids. I look for things that are right. 
I don't examine them. Let me see what they're doing wrong. No, I just enjoy them and I help them when they need help. Even when they're adults now, I still feel the same way about them. Praise the Lord. And I don't see their problem. God says he, he looks at you. He sees you as innocent and pure as the Lamb of God without spot or blemish because the blood of Jesus has been applied. And that's how he looks at you. He has good thoughts according to Jeremiah 29, 11. And according to Psalm 139 and Psalm 40, his thoughts for you are as many as the sands of the sea. In other words, 24 seven, every moment of every day, God is thinking something good about you. I remember when our kids were, when they were babies and they were in the crib and they were just sleeping. And we'd go over and sneak in there, it's real quiet. And we'd look at them and think, oh, how precious, how much we love them and what we're gonna do for them. And we, we didn't like, oh, well, well, he wet his diaper. What does he, no, no. It was our good pleasure to clean that thing up. We were so thankful for what God had given us, praise the Lord. And uh, we just, you know, I feel the same way today, hallelujah. Even when they don't deserve it, praise the name of the Lord. So why is he mindful that we just read the scripture that we are just dust. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We, because of that, we could go right into the throne of God. And we don't have to go in, you know, backing up. We, we, can I, we, we, no, we go in both because that's our daddy. When I was in business, and I guess now still with, I have an office and people call up, salesmen, you know, hey, I want to come in and whatever. They have to get an appointment pretty much. But my kids, they, I see them out there. I stop whatever I'm doing. Even if I'm talking with someone else, excuse me just a moment, come on in. And I receive them. And they don't have to justify. They're welcome just because they're my children. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Jesus knows everything you're going through. He knows. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. He feels the pain. If you feel it, he feels it. As a, as a man, I could say the same thing about my, about my kids. And I'm just a man. God is love. Hallelujah. Reminds me of a story. A preacher, heard a preacher say this. He related about his mother was in the hospital with some surgery. Can't remember what it was. But the doctor left instructions that uh, a certain day, maybe the day after whatever, she would have to get up and walk. You know, twice a day. So like the day shift nurse had to do it. And the night shift nurse had to do it. And he was sitting there watching. And the first time the day shift nurse came in there, okay, up. She looked at the chart, doctor's orders. We've got to get up and walk. Come on, let's go. And she was very abrasive. And he watched and he bristled as he watched his mother, you know, in pain. And he noticed his, his fist. He started kind of going like that, you know, like what? And uh, he... She walked down the aisle, you know, carrying the IV and all that. And by the time she got back in bed, he's like, that didn't, that was not a blessing. She's not any stronger. That just tore her down. She's weaker. And he was just uh, very upset. And uh, he thought he was going to stay around. And he thought, I should have done something. Should have intervened. And so I'm, I'm going to be here. And when it, and then this evening, I'm going to make sure that everything... Well, the new nurse comes in there, very gentle. How you doing? We have to get up. He says, why don't we just, let me just put the pillow right here and just sit up a little bit. Waited a few minutes. Is everything all right? 
And then let's just, let's just swing around a little bit here. Let me, let me do your legs. Okay, are you all right? We can rest. And then went through these slow incremental with rest in between. And she got and walked and took it very slow. And by the time she came back, she was walking pretty good. He noticed a big smile on her face. She had hope. She was beginning to think, hey, I'm going to get better. I'm, a, you know, and she got back in bed still very slow increments. And he was amazed. Instead of being torn down, she was built back up. And he went to the nurse and said, tell me. He said, that day shift nurse, man, she was just, she was so hard on her. It didn't help her at all. But I noticed you were so kind. You were so gentle. You took the time and, and it made her stronger. How come you were able to do that? And she said, oh, I've had that surgery. I know how much it hurts the first time you have to get up and walk. And you see, that's what Jesus had. He knows about, he knows how it hurts. And therefore, when he comes in, when you call upon his name, he just doesn't come in, you know, like a hammer. He'll come in gentle. He knows exactly how to do it to make you stronger than you were before and, and bring the victory in because he has been all the affliction came on him. He knows exactly how you are hurting. Praise the Lord. And it also reminds me of, a, a, well, let me just say Luke 12, 32. Let's look at that. Fear not, little flock. This is what Jesus said. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And the kingdom comes always with love. And God won't come in there with a big hammer to get you right. He'll do it the best way for you. He knows you better than you know you. He knows how much you hurt. He knows the best way, whether it's bam right then or take the time, but he'll do it to make you the strongest and the most blessed and happy that it can be. This is who the God that we serve. We should always run to God. Never run from God. People run from God when they mess up. That's all the more time you need to run to God. Because when you mess up, what do you need? You need mercy. Where are you going to find more mercy than a God whose mercies are new every morning? Amen. You run to the world, you're going to get a beating. But you run to God and he'll be gentle because he knows how you feel. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, reminds me of a story. <clears throat> well, it's not a story. This is actually in my life. And uh, you may think, well, what, what difference does that make? Well, I'll get to that. Trust me, there's a kick at the end. I don't know exactly how old my son was, but it was uh, the age where you, you play. It's before Little League, you play tee ball, where you put the ball on the tee. And this was his first time to do that. And so he, was a, he had a pretty nice swing, and he could whack it probably better than anybody on the team, left-hander. And uh, so uh, he, they put him batting first. And so the first thing is he whacked it, line drive about a foot to the left of the second baseman. And he kind of go like that, and it stuck in his glove just like there was Velcro there. And everybody... <laughs> Hooray, you know, and it was great, and it was, and it was great. And so he's jogging back to the bench, and I noticed. Now, no one else noticed this. I'm the only one that did. Why is that? Because I'm his daddy. I looked, and he wasn't crying, but I could see maybe just little tears in his eyes. And you know what? I hurt. He may, well, what difference does that make? In his life, that little thing. In fact, his very next at bat, he hit it over everybody's head, circle of bases, and completely forgot about that first at bat. But I'm still thinking about it. He's 33 years old now. And when I talk about it, I kind of feel a little pain in my heart. Because why I'm his dad. This is the Father's heart. Praise the Lord. And so, the same thing happens to us. We get all upset about some little thing. And God, being the Alpha and the Omega, 
the beginning of the end, knows your whole life, knows that this little thing that has upset you is not going to have any impact on your life, fulfilling your kingdom destiny, that in very short order, you're going to completely forget about it. And yet, because you hurt, he hurts. If I can hurt, talking about what happened to my son, I don't know, almost 30 years ago, and it was nothing, God hurts when you hurt. And he wants to deal with that if we'll just run to him. This is a father's heart. Just a little precursor to Father's Day. Fathers, do you understand how special that you are? You reflect God more than anyone else. Do you know that you are the only people in the history of the world or ever will be that God shares his title with? You're very special. You show God. Your children look at you and they read about he's a heavenly father. It's very important. No wonder the devil has worked so hard to take the father out of the home. You're very special. You've been given a lot. And to whomsoever much is given, much is required. Don't be ashamed that you hurt. I'm not ashamed that now my son's 33. I'm starting to tear up now just thinking about it. I remember that hurt. Just like Jesus. Remember those, those hurts came on the cross. He's, he's not bound by time. It's like it's right now to him. And he just, he wants to make you whole. And if we'll just let him. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, I got one more story about my son. Uh, well, his mother and I taught him about uh, saving his money if he wanted to buy something. Tried to teach him, you know, spiritual principles as well. The giving principle and so on. But also practical things in the natural that you would need to do. Uh, and we'd give him, you know, like chores to do so he can earn some money and then, you know, he could spend some, but save some for something big maybe he wanted. Well, he saved his money, did everything that we taught him. So we were really proud of that. And he wanted to get, this is back in the day, the big deal was the John Madden NFL football <laughs> video game. So he had saved his money and his mom has taught him how to shop and look for sales and all this, so he found a uh, on sale at Best Buy, and he had the money necessary to get it. And he said, "Dad, can you take me up to Best Buy to buy that?" And I'm like, "Sure, let's go." So we go up there. It was great. He he uh, went up there to buy it, and the guy charged rang up a too high price. And my son said, "Oh no, that's on sale. Here's the flyer." And the man looked at it and he goes. Oh, he looked at my son. He said, good shopper. <laughs> and I'm just, you know, beaming with pride. And then the guy rings it up and pff, sales tax. Suddenly it dawned on me. We had forgotten to tell him that he would have to have money <laughs> to pay the sales tax. And I thought, what a terrible father that I am. <laughs> so what happened? Well, the moral of the story is I paid the sales tax. I was so proud of him. I went and told him, go pick out another game that you want. I paid with cash and I gave him the change left over. Praise the Lord. Why is so one thing that he did that we should learn from? Because he did the best he could with the knowledge that he had. He did everything right. He obeyed his daddy and what he was taught to the best of his ability. How many of you know you're going to go out into situations and even if you do your very best, you could fall short sometimes. Have you noticed that? But he had some advantage that we need to do. He had his daddy with him. So wherever you go and whatever you do, always take your daddy with you. Because sooner or later, you're going to end up short. But if you got your daddy with you, he'll make up the difference, amen, and maybe even give you more than that, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's look at uh, 
Matthew 7, 11. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Praise the Lord. If an earthly father would do that, how much more your heavenly father? Let's look at Ephesians 3.20. This is what happened. And if an earthly father would do it, your heavenly father will every time. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He didn't just get his John Madden game. He got some other game. I don't know what it was. And got to keep the change in addition. It was exceedingly abundantly more than what he was asking or thinking. Praise the Lord. So I tell you, God won't afflict. He, the Bible says he won't tempt any man. Amen. He won't bring evil any way whatsoever if as you leave a comfort zone yes you may deal with persecutions but as a good father he will discipline us and that's a good thing better to be disciplined by a loving father than take a beating from the world let's look at Hebrews 12 chapter 12 7 through 11 if you endure chastening God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye being without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us. They're fathers of our flesh and they correct in the flesh. And we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto a father of the spirits and live. How far are we going? Oh, verse 11, okay. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, for our good, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, I'm thankful that my earthly father disciplined me because it sure kept me from getting a lot of heartache and sorrow that I could have had if I didn't have a father that, and I wasn't afraid of him. He loved me. I knew it was for my good. Amen. And we should know whatever God does for us, it's for our good always. And he's for us, not against us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? We shouldn't be afraid. What can man do to me? I got my daddy with me wherever that I go. And there's nobody can take my daddy, praise God. Hallelujah. So always run to God. So I just want you to know, Jesus knows how you feel. When you hurt, he hurts. He knows what you're going through and he wants to deliver you, but we have to know it won't automatically happen. We go to him, we give him permission. We say, my will is that I put myself into your hands. I want your uh, healing. I want your blessing. I want your, I'm not afraid of it. I know it's for my good to put me into a position to fulfill my kingdom destiny. He's just waiting for you to call upon his name. Hallelujah. We speak his word and call things that be not as though they were. So that then it gives him the legal right to make it on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, we might have to be a little uncomfortable. And that's going to be that way the rest of your life. Better to have to be a little bit uncomfortable every now and then as you stretch your faith, move up uh, in your inheritance and the ability to lay hold of it. But, and you, yes, you'll get some persecutions which you can overcome through the same way by the power of his word, believing his word, speaking his word, doing his word, but he'll never afflict you or bring evil. He doesn't divide his kingdom. That's what Satan does. A kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. But the word says, the word of God shall stand forever. 
So therefore, he never divides his kingdom. He doesn't make sick, then heal. No, he just heals. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we'll close with this one verse. Sum it all up. This then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If you're experiencing any darkness, it's not from God. He is love. These words, they are spirit and they are life. And what comes with life? Abundance, peace, success, joy, all these wonderful things. But the enemy system of darkness that has all these things attached to it. Heartache, sorrow, poverty, failure. You don't want any of those things. Run to your daddy. Take him with you. Invite him along wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, even if it's just laying in your bed. Take him along with you. I, this last week, I wasn't in my normal routine. And usually I have time. I, uh, I'm pretty disciplined about spending time with the Lord and studying. And uh, I really didn't have a lot of time for that. But, you know, serving people is serving God. You know, loving people is loving God. And so I, I had to take my daddy with me when I was doing, you know, like mundane things. You know what? And it was fun. And I was able to make it a lot more joyous than uh, uh, just doing those, those th chores. Praise the Lord. Well, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. He just wants to bless you if you'll let him. Hallelujah. So, you, thank you. Take your daddy. If you don't remember anything else, just remember that. Wherever you go, whatever you do, take your daddy with you. Let's pray together.